whether we like it or not, the NFL is a much better place for the league and just overall if the Dallas Cowboys are good, if they're relevant. Like in 2014, you know, while Cowboys fans kind of live in this uh, alternate facts world, this alternate universe of uh, that was a catch by Des Bryant, even though the rules, as stupid as the rules are, indicate it wasn't, but this whole fantasy of, well, that cost us a Super Bowl because Des Bryant catches that. We score a touchdown, game over. Forgetting the fact that you were still playing in Lambeau, Aaron Rodgers was on the other side of the field, and he would have had the ball with like three and a half minutes left. On top of that, that would have meant that you would have had to go play Seattle the next week and then potentially face New England in the Super Bowl. Good luck with that. But 2014 relevant Cowboys equals NFL is a little more interesting. Either love them or hate them. Everybody has a reaction. 2015, though, you let DeMarco Murray go in free agency because Jerry Jones always does a horrible job of managing to the salary cap, overpaying guys and overpaying the wrong guys. Then Tony Romo gets hurt and misses most of the year. It was a bad, bad year. 2015 was bad. So now as you get ready to head into 2016, the Cowboys have a top five pick. They've got an aging quarterback with years of great statistical performance and very little to show for it at the end of the day. Um, the thought process being is could this team be right back in a contending position again? Well, they draft Ezekiel Elliott fourth overall, which they got a lot of heat for and a lot of flack for, similar to uh, the decision to draft Zach Martin in 2014 over Johnny Manziel. But I think they understood the formula that Ezekiel Elliott was a special talent. And you take special talents in the top five, regardless of offensive or defensive position. If they're special, you take them because they will make a major difference. So one way to protect Tony Romo was to improve the quality of the running game and make it an Ezekiel Elliott-based offense as much as it would be a Tony Romo offense. And now you've got a veteran quarterback who can make some big plays in the passing game with guys like Des Bryant and Jason Witten. You know, now you're talking about a team that could really do some things. So, of course, wouldn't you know in the preseason, Tony Romo gets hurt. <laughs> and it looks like 2016 is going to be another disaster for the Cowboys. In, in theory, that's what it looked like. <clears throat> and it would be fitting. Because for some reason, the people involved with the Hall of Fame were in such a rush to put Jerry Jones's ass in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I don't get it. Yes, he has three Super Bowl trophies, but clearly a large portion of that credit goes to Jimmy Johnson. He was the architect. He was the guy, regardless of who carried what title, he was the guy that made it happen. He was the guy that built the organization. He's the one that made them champions. And all the evidence that you need is that 20 plus years after he's gone, Jerry Jones hasn't been able to build anything close to resembling a real championship contending team. And people leaving in free agency like DeMarco Murray happens because of idiotic decisions made by Jerry Jones in free agency. This is also the Jerry Jones that ultimately signed off on bringing in Greg Hardy fresh off of some domestic abuse charges in 2015. Now, this is the Jerry Jones that passed on Randy Moss in 1998. And a lot of times, frankly... When Jerry Jones does do something right, it's because somebody else makes the decision for him and other people fucking screw up. It was his son, Stephen, that pushed for Zach Martin over Johnny Manziel and overrode his dad in 2014. And that has worked out splendidly. Just think about that. You get to 2016. And Ezekiel Elliott is there at number four because other teams have passed on him ultimately uh, based off of this or that or everything else. But at the end of the day, he's there. And I'm sure at the end of the day, that was a Stephen Jones decision too, even if Jerry Jones was on board with it. You know, so often this guy benefits from other people's mistakes. Looking at the 2010 draft, people passed on Des Bryant because of off-the-field concerns. So finally got to a point where he could make up for his Randy Moss mistake with Des Bryant. Well, Jerry, you're never going to make up for your Randy Moss mistake, but it was a nice attempt. Des Bryant is a nice player, but he's not first ballot Hall of Fame worthy like Randy Moss was. 
even Tony Romo. This is a kid that was undrafted coming out of Eastern Illinois. You know, Jason Witten was a third round pick out of Tennessee back in 2003. You know, I'm just saying. So I, I just don't get why there's so much love for Jerry. Yeah, he's got personality and he's good with the media and all that other stuff. He built that massive shrine to his ego, that temple called AT&T Stadium. But at the end of the day, a lot of times when things go well for the Cowboys, it's in spite of Jerry Jones, not because of them. But nonetheless, as you get ready to roll into 2016, another major injury to the shoulder collarbone area for Tony Romo, or this time is his back or whatever the fuck, it's hard to keep track of him at this point because there were so many of them. And now we turn the keys to the Cowboys car over to Dak Prescott, a kid from Mississippi State who had a nice college career, but his no, most notable thing he did during the buildup to the draft was not to me his combine performance, but it was his DUI arrest. The same Dak Prescott that the Cowboys were not targeting in round number four, mind you, they wanted Connor Cook. So even in the case of Dak Prescott, again talking about the thing where Jerry Be Jones benefits as much in spite of himself than because of himself and because of the stupidity or the mistakes of other people, as the Oakland Raiders trade up into the beginning portion of round four to take Connor Cook, Dak Prescott falls into the Dallas Cowboys lab and they take him. And it's funny how that works out. Because all Dak Prescott did for all intents and purposes, along with Ezekiel Elliott and the best offensive line in the National Football League, was save the Dallas Cowboys season and changed the entire aura of this organization, changed the entire outlook and perspective of this organization. To go into this season thinking you've got a fourth-round uh, rookie quarterback lacking in big explosive arm talent and you're going to be a playoff team? Come on especially with a mediocre to below mediocre defense, you're crazy. But all the Cowboys did was go out and finish 13-3, and three, get the number one overall seed in the NFC, have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And even within those three losses, when you look closer, you could make an argument that this is a Cowboys team that had the stuff to potentially go 16-0 in the regular season. They lost in week one to the Giants by one point because Terrence Williams didn't get his ass out of bounds to give the Cowboys a field goal attempt to close out the game. Later on in the season, they lose to the Giants by three points because they allowed Odell Beckham Jr. on one play to carve him up and run through him and go for a long touchdown. And then in week 17, they lost to Philadelphia when they didn't care. They were trying to get Romo action and Sanchez action. They already had the top seed clinch, so they literally didn't care. This was just a drill. This was just one big practice scrimmage for them. Those are their three losses. You can make an argument that if Terrence Williams gets out of bounds, the Cowboys maybe double team Odell Beckham Jr. in the fourth quarter, don't give up that big touchdown, and care to give a fuck in week 17. This is a Cowboys team that could have went 16 and 0, or at the very least, 15 and 1. And I know as the season went along, there was this buzz and talk about whether or not the job should be given back to Romo and Romo, Romo, Romo. Fuck Romo. At the end of the day, while the Cowboys went to the playoffs, lost at home in the divisional round of Green Bay, you have to look how Dak Prescott played in that divisional round game. He brought this team back. He had them in position to win. It was the defense that ultimately let them down, combined with Aaron Rodgers throwing one of the most beautiful passes I have ever seen in a National Football League game down the sideline to Jared Cook to put the Packers in position for Crosby to hit a 50-plus yard field goal to win the motherfucker. But this was a Cowboys team that was down big early, and they came back. They would not have done that crap with Tony Romo. I guarantee you. And even if they did, it's much better that you did it with the 23-year-old rookie than the 35, 36-year-old guy with lots of shoulder and back injuries to his credit. Just think about the entire aura of this Cowboys organization now. You're going to be rolling into 2017 with Ezekiel Elliott having a year of experience in the National Football League. The best offensive line in the National Football League having another year of experience, chemistry, and continuity playing together. You're going to have a Dak Prescott 
who grew and progressed as the year went along, now going into year two, this is a scary Cowboys team to think about. So it was absolutely the right decision to stick with Dak Prescott. And long term, this organization is better off for it. And how ironic it is that this team wanted Connor Cook in round four, and they ended up with Dak Prescott instead, and they found their next face of the franchise. They found their next Cowboys quarterback. They found their next Captain America, if you will. Incredible. So even in seasons where you have great regular seasons and disappointing finishes in the playoffs, you can still find positives. And there are a lot of positives here. This is a team that should, in theory, clearly have their best football ahead of them, unless Jerry Jones finds a way to really royally fuck this up and bury them in such a deep salary cap hole that they have no chance, choice but to jettison some of their best talent. You've got Dak and Zeke getting ready to enter year two. You've got the best offensive line in football. You've got Des Bryant in the prime of his career. You've got a solid defensive coordinator in Rob Marinelli, a defense that played a little bit better in 2016. You've got a lot of things going for you. A lot. It's going to be really hard to screw this up. But we'll see how Jerry Jones tries to do that in this offseason. You've got the whole Tony Romo saga. You know, concerns about, is he going to go to Washington? Is he going to go to Houston? Is he going to go to Denver? You know, at the end of the day, if you're Jerry Jones... Let's just keep it real. Who gives a fuck where Tony Romo goes? I know you have this heart on for this dude. You're in love with this dude. You wish you could marry him and put your babies inside of him or have him put your ba his babies inside of your butthole. But dude, let it go. Who cares if he goes to play for the Washington Redskins? You got fucking Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott and Des Bryant and Jason Witten and the best offensive line in football. Who gives a shit? Beat his ass twice a year like you know you damn should. Who gives a crap where he goes? Instead of worrying about where Tony Romo goes if you're releasing him, trying to come up with some nudge, nudge, wink, wink type of deal, fucking let him go. Be confident in what you have. Say, screw it. I don't give a shit if he goes to this team or that team. We're still going to go in there when we need to and kick his fucking ass because we've got a team that can do that. Now, of course, because Jerry Jones manages the salary cap so horribly, they've got free agents like Ronald Leary and Morris Claiborne and Barry Church, I believe, as well, and Terrence Williams. Um, even, so even you let a guy like Terrence Williams go in free agency and let somebody massively overpay for him, you know, you got Ronald Leary, who I thought had a really good year on the interior of that line in 2016, a key to that offensive line. Do you really want to risk letting him go in free agency? Maybe Lyle Collins comes back from injury and plays well in 2017, but maybe he doesn't. You know, Morris Claiborne he finally played well. It only took five fucking years, but it wasn't a contract year, so you really want to pay him big money? And this will be key to see if Jerry Jones really tries to get hog wild here, or does he sit there and have confidence in his scouting team? Does he have confidence in his son, the real guy that knows what the hell he's doing in that organization, to say, hey, we can let these guys go. Let's not panic. Let's not overspend in free agency. Either we have those replacements for these guys already on the roster. If not, let's go draft them. That's what it comes down to. In terms of draft needs for this team, you know, offensively, I, I think we look at this and this is an outstanding tight end class. And if there is a tight end like Evan Engram on the board at number 28, I know you've got needs at defensive end. Even though Cowboy fans argue with me that they don't need help at defensive tackle, shut the fuck up. You do. You have needs in all three levels of that fucking defense. Are any of your defensive tackles all pros? No, exactly. Shut the fuck up. You need defensive tackle help, too. You need defensive end help. You need help in the linebacking core. You need help in the secondary, both at corner and safety. But it'd be really tempting for them at 28 to take a tight end like an Evan Ingram because at the end of the day, as much as you need to improve that defense, and you do, you're in a position where you're going to be building your team around Dak and Zeke. It's going to be D and Z. It's going to be Dragon Ball Z, if that's what you want to call that damn backfield. So you better get a little bit more help in terms of the skilled players on that side of the ball, especially with Jason Witten getting ready to enter his 15th year in the National Football League. How much more is he going to really want it, and how close is he to being completely and totally done? 
And in that passing game, Witten is not what he once was. Cole Beasley is an underneath option. You've got Dez out there when he's healthy, but sometimes he wants to play like the man, and sometimes he fucking doesn't. You need to help Dak and Zeke more, especially Dak. So is it a guy like Evan Ingram? Is it a wide receiver, somebody like a John Ross? Who, now, granted, after running a 4-2-2 in the 40, probably isn't going to be there for them at 28. But if he was, even if you need help on the defensive side of the ball, do you pass on getting that type of weapon on the offensive side? The point I'm getting at here is where the Cowboys do have needs, they just have to get really good football players. And they have to be smart about this and not reach for need take the best available guys because this is the type of team that really, let's be honest, they're this this close. Even with the flaws and deficiencies they have, especially on the defensive side of the ball, this team is still this close. And you get one or two impact players and you get Jalen Smith to come back from injury and play like Jalen Smith can potentially play, this is a team you might want to put some money on for winning Super Bowl 52, and I mean that. They're that close. Of course, unless Jerry Jones screws this all up. 